hi all, in today's video we're going to be going over scientific notation which is in chapter 10, section 3 in your notes. Okay, so if you have done uh, physics this year or in third year or maybe even chemistry, you will maybe come across scientific notation and understood how it works in a science background. Okay, we're going to show you how it works in maths today. And also, even if you haven't seen it before, don't worry, we're going to take it back from the start and introduce it on how to get from a numbers to scientific notation, okay? So what scientific notation is, or in other words, standard form, okay, so you maybe see the word standard form used, it means scientific notation. It's a shorthand way of writing very large or very small numbers, okay? So in scientific notation, a number is written as a number between 1 and 10, and then we multiply it by a power of 10, okay? And that's going to be a shorter way of writing the same number. Now, I'm going to show you, if you look at the table below, okay? I've got two numbers we'd write in normal form, okay? And what happens here is I want to write this more like scientific form, okay? Because they're very long numbers to write, okay? We'll start off with this first number, which is 32,400,000, okay? So what that means, that means that I have to write this number with the first digit I've got, which is 3. I then put a decimal point in, I'm going to write the other numbers before I get to all the zeros down, okay, so I've got 2 and 4, okay, I'm not going to write all the other zeros in because that's just keeping the place value for this number, okay, they're not adding any value to it apart from place value. So I've got 3.24, that's what this number represents, okay, however, I need to then work out what power of 10 this is, and how we do this, we look at what we are going to do with the decimal point here, so normally the decimal point would be there. Okay, so it'd be after the units. Okay, so if I count where I've moved this decimal point to, now I've moved it between the two and the three. Okay, so that means it's moved once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven times to get in between the three and the two. That means that there's going to be a seven on the top of my power of ten. Okay, so I get three point two four times ten to the seven. Okay, so that's how we change very large numbers into scientific form. Okay, I'm going to do the same with the small number now, so not 0 0.00057736. So that's a very small number. Now what's going to happen is because we're making our number really small, to write that shorthand, it's going to originally look bigger, but then I'm going to have to use a negative power to then make it go lower, which will then take me back to my small number. Okay, it's just going to look bigger to start with. So I'm going to write the numbers, I don't write the zeros, okay, because they're place value, okay, I'm going to start with my first digit, which is the 5, then I'm going to write decimal point, like what I've done up here, I'm going to write all the other numbers that come after it, so it's 7, 7, 3, 6, and then it's going to be times 10, and I need to work out the power. So, the decimal point is there, and I've moved it to in between the 5 and the 7, okay, so if I think about what this decimal point's done, it's went once, twice, oh, try again, once, twice, three, four, five, okay, so it's moved five times to get in between the five and seven, however, it's moved five times to the right, so it's making my number smaller, that means that it's going to be to the power negative five there, okay, so that's how we change numbers from normal form to scientific form, and your first exercise today will be doing that, okay, giving you numbers, changing it to scientific form. What we can also be asked is, if I've been given a number in scientific form, how can I write that in normal form? So it's a reverse process, okay? So I'm going to change the colour for this just to show you the reverse process. So, basically, because we've seen how we do it from normal form to scientific form, we can think about what the number was before it changed to this, okay? So I'm thinking what this number was before it changed to 10 to 10 to the 4, okay? Which is a big number, okay? So that means it was 5, 9, 6, okay? Now, if I have got times 10 to the 4, that means there was going to be 4 numbers, okay, after my decimal point here, okay, after the 5, basically, okay, so the 5 happens first, and then times 10 to the 4 means there was going to be 4 digits after there. Now, I know 2 of them, 9 and 6, which means to get the other 2, I just need to add 2 zeros onto that, okay, and then that way, now, the left-hand side would match up with the right-hand side, okay? 5.96 times 10 to the 4 would be 59,600, okay? We're going to do the same with the bottom one now. So again, I need to think what has happened here, okay? So this has been made smaller by cause of the times 10 to the negative 2, which means that there's decimal. So that means the times 10 to the negative 2 part means there's actually two numbers before I get to the 1 here, okay? So it's a bit like this one here, okay? So what that means is that I would get 0, 0.0 and then I would write all the numbers down 1, 
three, five, three. Okay, and if you think about what we've done here, that decimal point, if I wanted to move it between the one and the three, it would have moved once, twice to get in between there, and that's why it's negative two. Okay, so that's how we change from numbers from normal form into scientific form. Okay, we're now going to look at some answers, some questions with this whilst using scientific notation. So a lot of times in scientific notation questions, we could be asked distance, speed, time questions. Okay, so just a quick wee thing to note here. So you need to know these formulas. So if I want to work at the distance, it's speed times time. So if you think of your triangle, again, if you're used to physics or if you're used to chemistry, you may have seen these triangles before. You've probably seen them in maths as well now. That if you cover up the distance, okay, so D, which is the top of our triangle, then what you're left with is S and T, okay? And because they're beside each other, it means they are times in, okay? So that's why our distance becomes speed times time, okay? If I'm thinking about working out the speed of something, and I know the distance and the time, I cover up the speed, what I'm left with is distance and time, so if I highlighted them, that is actually a fraction, it's distance divided by time, okay? And that's why we've got that there. Or, if I want to work out time, and I divide by the S, I then get the time there, distance divided by speed. Okay, so that's how the triangle works. You have seen this before, I'm sure. Just a quick reminder, okay? Also, because we are now using scientific notation, these buttons here can help you get the answer, not the answer, sorry, how to type it into your calculator properly, okay? So my calculator is more like the one on the right, where I've got this times 10 to the power x button, okay? I have here. Whereas your calculator might have an EXP button, okay, which just means exponential, which is the same thing, it does the same uh, job. So that's what we're going to use to create the times 10 to the power symbol, okay. So we're going to start off with the first question, okay. So the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second, okay, so a very, very large number, okay, it's going to be 3 with uh, 8 zeros coming after it. Okay, so it's a big number. All right, so the distance uh, from the Earth to the Sun, okay, is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters, so an even bigger number. Okay, how long does it take for light to travel to from the Sun to the Earth? Okay, and we've got to give our answer in standard form, which is scientific notation. Okay, so our working, the first thing we do is we think about our speed, distance, time formula. Okay. So if I want to work out how long it takes, that's the time. So the time is distance divided by speed. The distance here, okay, that is 1.5 times 10 to the 11. Okay, and I'm going to divide that answer by the speed, which is 3 times 10 to the power 8. Okay, so I'm going to type that number in my calculator. I'm going to divide it by that number there. And if you use the button at the bottom there, effectively, there isn't, that isn't the only way to do it. However, that is probably the quickest way. What you should get, and if you've done it correctly, is you should get the answer 500 out. Okay, so it takes 500 seconds. Now, that is not written in scientific notation. What that would be in scientific notation is 5.0 times 10 to the 2. Okay, so I get 5 times 10 to the 2, which is telling me that if I had to put a decimal point in, decimal point would be after the zeros, which means it's moved twice to get just before the 5. Okay, so it's times 10 to the 2 there. Okay, we'll look at the second one now. So, the time taken for light to reach the Earth from the edge of the known universe is, oh, it's a massive number, it looks like 14 billion years. Okay. Light travels at the speed of 9.46 times 10 to the 12 kilometers per year. So that's our speed there, okay? Work out the distance, okay, in kilometers from the edge of the known universe to Earth. Give your answers in standard form. Now, the first thing I'm actually going to do with this question is I'm going to change that number at the top. That number at the top is not how I would want to write this question, okay? I want to take this in my calculator a lot quicker than adding all those zeros. So what I'm going to do is if I wanted to change that, It'd be 1.4, okay, so we use the numbers we're given, 1.4, times 10, and now I'll work out what the number is. So my decimal point would normally be there. So to work out how many times it's moved to get to just after the 4, we just count the jumps. So it's 1, 2, oh, try again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
10. Okay, so they had to move 10 times to get in between the 1 and 4, so that means it's times 10 to the power 10. Okay, now I'm going to use scientific notation on both my numbers to work out what the distance is. Okay, so the distance here, speed times time, that's going to be 9.46 times 10 to the 12. That's going to multiply by my time taken, which is 1.4 times 10 to the 10. And if you do that properly, you should get the answer 1.3244 times 10 to the power 23. Okay, so that's what I get in my calculator. Because the distance, oh, I forgot to put my units on both of these questions. The units in the first question, because it was a time, it would be seconds. And because it was a distance, it was talking about kilometres eh, per year. So it was a work at distance kilometres. So it'd be kilometers there. Okay, so that's a video on how to change numbers in scientific notation and also example examples on when it can come up in questions. Okay, thank you.